Hey friends, welcome back for part two. I have an amazing guest here and this, my friend's name is Jeremy Clarkin. We met at a speak off, which is a speech contest. And he and I just started to share some communication. Jeremy um, has an amazing story that we're gonna share. He is a girl dad of three, a retired Marine, and he is helping Marines and men through broken, the brokenness in their heart while they're on their healing journey. And I wanna tell you, he is with Tather, Tathered Soul Creative and their mission is to help as many veterans as possible realize that they have the ability to use their trauma to impact the world around them in a constructive way. I love that. I really love that. So tell me how it got started. So um, funny story how it even got started. Um, it actually was started when I was inpatient. I had a uh, therapist come up to me and ask me to if I ever considered art therapy. And I looked at him and I was like, sir, do you realize I'm a Marine? I was like, I don't do that hippie stuff. And he was like, he's give it a try. He's like, try some mandalas. And I was like, I don't even know what a mandala is. I can't even draw stick figures. And he's like, all right, here, look, here's some templates. Just go in there, just focus on that and just listen to some music. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's, let's do this. Uh, I didn't take it serious at all. I literally just went in there, goofed off, and I talked to the people that were around me and wasted time while I was in there, right? Um, but when I got out, I was going through a really hard time with my wife. I wanted to relapse into drinking, and everything was just basically resurfacing. And I was like, this, is, this, this, this can't be it. I have to find something. I was like, let me give this art stuff one more try. So I went to Michael's, I grabbed the canvas, I grabbed some paint, and then I went into my shed and I threw a playlist on because I started thinking about what, like, what, what is bothering me so much? And then I thought about the emotion of worthlessness. I felt like I had no purpose, that I wasn't going to amount to anything. So I focused on that one emotion and I put a playlist together that really like pulled that emotion out of me. And I just went in there and I just started throwing paint at this canvas, literally just slinging paint. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just felt like this, this instinct into me to just do that. And I just started like drawing and painting and swirling and doing all this like crazy stuff. And um, by the time I was done with it, I felt like I've actually acknowledged this emotion. It wasn't like before where I put that emotion deep in a box and it just left it to fester. Yeah. Uh, this is me acknowledging the fact that I felt this thing and I, I owned it in that time period that I was in there. I didn't really focus on a set situation that was triggering it, but I was focusing on that emotion and I was able to out, like put it out in, in, into the world in, in that aspect. Um, from there, I, we were talking about something in a men's group at the VA and we we're talking about art. And I was like, you know what, guys, like, I'm going to tell you a story. I was like, I, I did some art this last week. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how I really feel about telling you guys this is a Marine. Uh, Marines and painting is not really uh, something prideful. And lo and behold, I showed it to the guys. And one of the guys was an NU graduate for art, NYU. And he's like, his mouth dropped when he seen my thing. And he was like, I'm going to be honest with you. Your art is amazing it's a mix of like I forgot the artist names he just spit off some history some artists and I was like ah you're just gassing me up bro I was like I can't paint anything I've never took an art class in my life and he's like no I think you need to show people your work and I was like okay dude yeah 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 whatever whatever he's like no 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 like and so he went and talked to my therapist my therapist the next time we sat down asked me about my art and I was like, dude, I didn't want people to know that I paint at all. And so my therapist looks at my stuff. And he's like, he's like, let me see what you got. So I showed him and he was like, do you know that I'm a very avid art collector? And I was like, no, I had no idea. I don't ask people if they're art collectors or into art. And he's like, no, there's something really special about this. He's like, I want you to work on one project each week and bring it into me. And I want you to focus on whatever emotion it is that's bothering you that week. And so that became my thing because I honestly, I've had so many therapies before that. And I was like, man, none of this stuff is working for me. And so we started doing that. And then we started talking about the emotion. 
and actually yeah. acknowledging the fact that this emotion had a had a, a hold on my life. Yes. And so that kind of how it like sprouted into where I went from there. Oh my gosh. I love this story. I love this story. Okay. Just uh, the, here in my mind, when you finished the first art project, did you bring it out or did you leave it in the shed? Left it in the shed. Were you proud of it or did you just feel that release and you're just like, okay, that it worked and I walked out? I just felt the release. Uh, honestly, I was kind of almost ashamed to it. Like I didn't want to show my mm -hmm. like wife it. I didn't want anybody to see what I was feeling. Yeah. And, Do you still uh, own that project? You still no. own that piece? No. I actually sold that piece. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So one of the things that um, I, I think I've shared with you in our story is that you heard me share in my story is that Austin drowned, but then Donovan died 10 years later, my sister's second son. And one of the things that I noticed about her is this reluctant to heal and do any of the healing work. And so then I took a deeper dive into the grieving process, even though we were already teaching grieving. And one of the things that I teach now, and it had came out about Donovan dying, is that we resist feeling negative emotion. It's human nature. We resist feeling negative emotion. And the emotion you said you were feeling in there was unworthy, correct? Uh, and so one of, uh, hopelessness. And so one of the things that I teach is how to lean into an emotion. So that's what you did in your artwork. You leaned into that one emotion and you allowed it to come out of you. That is so beautiful. And you have a tool to do it with. Because most often what we'll do is we'll try to resist. We don't, I don't want to feel... I don't want to feel sad, let's say. So I'm, I'm not going to feel sad. You and I did the same thing. We went to the bottle, right? So we drank to make us feel better. We will, women will over shop. Men will get a, a, men and women will get addicted to porn. We'll get into sex. We'll bite our nails. We'll use drugs. There's all these other things we're doing all while going around, not feeling that one simple emotion. Um, so as you continued your artwork, you would just bring up the emotion and then you would paint it out, correct? Yes. So you would bring it out and then you would come up with some artwork from it. Yes. At some point you decided this is a thing and I got to start sharing it. What, when, did, when did that point happen? Okay, friends, let's take a brief break right here. I want to share something with you. If you're grappling with the heavy weight of long-term grief, you know the kind that feels as like it's consuming every part of your life? And now that I say that, what grief doesn't feel like it's consuming every part of your life? I'm talking about the pain of losing someone you love that's affecting your zest for life, your energy, your relationships with your spouse, your parents, or your children. As a grief specialist, I want you to know that you're not alone on this healing journey. Grief can cast a long shadow, but there's a path for healing. There is a true path for healing. And I've designed something very special for you. I want you to take a look at you, the griever. My partner, Joy Renique of Celebrate Legacy, and I have curated a transformative three-day retreat, especially for those who are suffering from grief after the loss of a loved one. Anyone trying to move towards healing. The best part is it is completely free. The virtual retreat is called Life After Loss. And we've assembled a remarkable team of experts who truly understand your pain, your heartache, and your longing for healing. They are also true grievers, and they've been on this journey before you. They're not going to only share from their own experience, but they're going to give you a safe place to grieve. And they will educate you about the grieving healing journey and give you actionable steps to move towards healing. I will also be speaking at this event. And the, the topic of my subject is, does grief have an end? Don't let grief continue to hold you back. Take the courageous step towards healing right now. Just click the button, the link that I have in the show notes to get your free ticket to the retreat. Your journey to healing begins with a single click. I can't wait to meet you virtually at the retreat where together we'll take these first steps toward a brighter future. You can also head over to grieflegacy.net backslash retreat or click the link below in this podcast description to save your free tickets. Your 
path to healing is just a click away, my friend. So I guess I kind of was getting talked into it from these guys from the group. And they were like, you should really like share this stuff. And I was like, I don't even know one. I don't like people to share it with to do that at that time. Like I was very like, didn't want to be around anyone. And, um, but I, I'd say one of my closest friends, um, his wife, uh, cheated on him at that time and he caught them and he was suicidal and he was going through it. I stayed with him for two weeks and I told him, I was like, look, brother, I want you to, I want to, I want you to try something because they like, just try it for me. I was like, I, don't, I, I like I, it worked for me and I, I feel like it could work for you. And so I took him in there and we went into the, his garage at that time and just let him focus on an emotion and he painted it. And then he's like, he's like, I, I want to be honest with you, man. This is the first time I'm acknowledging those feelings mm -hmm. and it feels good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, dude, it's, it's hard. And mm -hmm. I promise you, this isn't it. You're going to have to go back to this emotion again or something of this that derives from this emotion because you're opening Pandora's box at this point. Yeah. You're going to have to continue this process. And so he did. And he's like, and he sends me like, he'll send me like little snippets of like these little canvases or tiles that he makes. And he's like, brother, this has changed my life. And at that moment yeah. is when I realized that I had something and I needed to share with other people. Now you connect the music to it. That's yes. not something that I use at all. We, I, I talk it out and show that I give them different aspects. Music is one of them that I give to use to processing the pain. Why the music? Tell me about, more about the music. So for me, the reason I chose music is because one, it helps pull that emotion to the surface, especially when I had so many different emotions, mm -hmm. but also it blocks out the voices that are popping in my brain. So now I'm focusing on the lyrics and I hear these beats or whatever it is. And I'm focusing only on that emotion and just pouring it onto the canvas, painting my pain away. I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it. So what we, what we also teach is that we know for a fact, if we were to lean into that emotion, when it first happened, like let's say sadness, if I were to lean into it and I, I literally tell people lean into it, the emotion would pass us in about a minute and a half, but we are so uncomfortable feeling those uncomfortable feelings that we push back against it. So instead of just letting it come through us in a minute and a half, we resist it for five days. And now we have five days more pain that we have to, to go through. So I love that you tie the music into it. I love that you have a tool that you're using. Okay. My next question is this. Do you think that it's like yourself that the men, men, didn't want to say, I'm having these emotions. I don't want to feel these emotions. Is it the men that are resisting, do you think, more than anything? Because it's a, a not macho thing to feel emotions. Um, I feel like for men, it's definitely more predominant because that's what we are, we're taught at such a young age is that you yeah. don't show the emotions. You don't show yeah. pain. You man up. You yeah. suck it up. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's the biggest thing, but I feel that means we also bury it more yeah. and by doing that, it, it explodes and we have these imploding episodes, I like to call them. Um, but I've seen it in women that do the same thing. They just shut off, but instead they become just, just stonewall. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I feel like I can touch women more because we do wear our emotions out, but it's also narrowing them down into the emotion that they're, that they're struggling with. How do you manage your emotions now? Do you continue to do you continue your painting? Yes, absolutely. I um I still struggle. Um yeah. you know, there's a lot, especially with anniversaries and uh death anniversaries, stuff like that is when it hits yeah. me the hardest. Uh painting is 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 like my biggest go-to. There's times even still that when painting, I can't I can't even sit down and paint because it's too like too much overload for me. Yeah. 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 Um, do you ever paint now? Do you paint in groups in your program? So you guys bring groups in or you're just showing them how to do it solo by themselves? So I do both. I started off okay. with doing solo. That way the people can have that more one on one and they can actually like understand it and take it home with them and be able to do it in any capacity at home, even if it's just like on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's how I started it off. But I do do groups. 
but what I do is I kind of take the groups, but I separate them yeah. from that group. Yeah. So that way they, they don't feel embarrassed for, or they don't feel like they have to like piggyback off of somebody else. Cause that happened a lot. We started to see is that people would piggyback off someone else's emotion instead of facing the fact of their own emotion. Right. And I can imagine, like, I mean, I could just see it because emotions have this energy, right? This energy. So if I'm like over here with anger and I'm painting anger and the next person is next to me is lonely, that they could collide with each other. Oh yeah, definitely. I could see that mm -hmm. happening. Okay. You and I, in our other show talked about things that you're teaching your daughters now is emotional, um, release one of the things that you talk about a lot now too and do have they ever done the painting yes uh emotional management we like to call it uh, and yeah we do I have them like there's times where I'll go in the studio and I'll just look at them be like it's your time you guys want to go and they're just <laughs> like yeah let's go let's go let's go and they'll come in and they'll just start doing their like little uh paintings that they do and that's like our little bonding time but it's also time for them to express how they're feeling too yeah and they they love it um, oh my gosh, that is amazing. That's so worth the weight in gold. What, um, okay, thank you for sharing that. I think I cut you off, I'm sorry. Tell me, tell me if you were gonna give me directions on picking out my song list, what would that be? What would the directions be for me on that? So the way that I would normally do it is be like, okay, so what's the emotion that's bothering you the most? Like, what do you feel like is is honestly just constantly popping in your head right now that's affecting you? I miss my girlfriend, Sharon. Okay. So that, that feeling of like just miss missing someone and wanting that, that time. Mm -hmm. So now I would tell that person to make a playlist of things that remind you of that person, those moments that you spent together and that you can also, like, if you hear that song, you immediately think of that person and play those songs while you're on this canvas and just let, and pick three colors that represent her and put it on your canvas. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I love it, I love it. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask you to finish this sentence. If I could change one thing, it would be? My reserve from sharing with everyone. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Okay. How can everybody find you that want to work with you? Um, so right now I have the Tattered Soul Creative on Instagram. That's like the main thing that I have everyone kind of go through. I also have a, a website and a shop on Society6. I go up Tattered Soul Creative and it'll pop up. And then I have my email with my um, like business website that I've, I, it, it's still working progress in that aspect. I haven't really put in much, much time into that as I should, but they can reach me and it, it sends an email directly to me. Perfect. All right, everyone. Everything that I have on Jeremy is going to be listed in the show notes below. You're going to have his, the link to his uh, Instagram. I'm going to have his website on there and everything that you need to find Jeremy. And if you know someone that could really benefit from Jeremy's work. And I feel we all could, please do not hesitate to reach out to them. This is amazing, beautiful work. Everyone knows that my girlfriend, Sharon died uh, six, seven years ago, and I really miss her. And just hearing him giving me the advice on how to work with her, I think this would be a great, great project for you guys all to do. So Jeremy, I wanna say thank you so much for being our guest. Guys, if you haven't listened to part one of Jeremy's story, please listen to part one. Also, side note, look for the symposium that's coming up in January. Jer Jeremy's going to be a featured speaker there, and you can really see him deal dig into his work and share his work with you. We love you all, and thank you so much. Bye.